All right, we are back, guys. My name is Logan with West Desert Wheeler, and let me tell you, around here, there's always something. This series covers the modifications and repairs and just working on my RCs that I don't normally show in most of my content. So every couple of weeks, I'm trying to upload one of these, and I put it up on a Saturday because I normally upload on a Monday and then one other day in the work week. Um, but the last three weeks I've been helping run or been traveling to RC competitions. So I've actually been hitting Tuesdays instead of Mondays because man, I'm just, you're swamped when you get back trying to get everything settled back in, take care of the family, all that. But we will be getting back to the Monday posts soon. Uh, it is Memorial Day weekend as of posting this. So I'm probably just gonna do another Tuesday upload because quite honestly, looking at views and whatnot, uh, videos that I post on holiday weekends usually don't do well, which makes sense. Most of my audience is an outdoor audience and they probably like to go camping or get away a little bit. Uh, totally understand that. This one's going up anyway. So for the people who do want to watch YouTube, wherever you may be, go ahead and grab a drink and we're gonna talk about all the different things I've been working on in the last two weeks. And uh, I put together a little list here on my phone. Let me tell you, we're gonna take a look at a lot of trucks this week. So first up, We've got the Axial Base Camp. This is the SCX-10 III. I was able to get one uh, a little bit earlier than most people. Thank you to Axial for sending this my way. And now we're getting to the upgrades and modifications on this truck. Uh, I've swapped out the wheels and tires to a Vanquish Method wheel, uh, all scale hardware on the beadlock ring there. It's also got some Predator Compound BFG crawlers. As you can see, these have been used. Uh, these are not brand new. They were a set I had sitting around, and uh, I like to do some swapping around of wheels and tires on my trucks. First thing we can take a look at is on the base camp's sliders. These are from Rock Pirates RC. Previously, I had modified one of their original 10-2 sliders and drilled my own hole to make them work. These are the legitimate made by Rock Pirates RC with the pre-drilled holes. This has a bunch more mounts to it. And uh, let's see, there's, there's four mounting screws right here, and then there's one longer slot. I don't remember exactly what all this fits. I believe these are 10.2 and TRX4 and SCX 10.3. Uh, you'd have to double check on their website, but these fit a variety of trucks and uh, they worked out nice. These are seven inch wide, so they fit the stock body perfectly. Really liking that. And then obviously you get a nice smooth, high clearance rock slider that you can use as a tool to pivot around on. Now, we are also looking at something that you may have just noticed as I lift the truck up sideways there. Let me pull out the body clips and we're gonna take a better look underneath the body real quick. Rock Pirates RC came out to our North vs. South finals and they brought a bunch of parts and they also helped me out with getting a set of their new prototype SEX 10-3 shock towers. They're not gonna be prototypes for long. They're going to be putting them into production but uh, yeah, I got an early set on mine and I'm really liking them so far. Uh, overall, the install went super easy. The only kind of tricky part is just that you have to re-drill the body. Um, I was able to get the front body post mounts to work with my stock uh, hood holes. However, in the rear with the straight post that the truck comes with, uh, I ended up just drilling two new holes through the bottom of the bed. Not a big deal at all, um, as the stock body probably won't stick around for too long on this truck. Um, one other modification I did to the rock sliders is I mount the stock battery tray on them, which means I drilled two holes and ran a three millimeter screw through the bottom and held the battery tray on. But up front, um, I'm also going to throw in some pictures here. The steering arm on the stock base camp runs into the factory pan hard mount and you cannot go to full lock with the, with the stock steering. You cannot get the knuckle to come to the bump stop when you're turning to the driver's side. You can go full passenger, but you cannot go full driver. And uh, with the Rock Pirates RC, they mount their pan hard mount from the back side of the pan hard bar, and that allows you to go to the full bump both directions. So you're actually going to pick up steering performance with this truck when you swap over to their front towers. On top of that, these are, uh, I don't remember if these are stainless or not, but they are a full metal shock tower, and that pan hard mount is going to be real stout definitely not going to have any longevity issues with these. It'll probably outlive the truck. I've sent a few off of cliffs and uh, they've always come out on top. So that should cover everything on the base camp as of now. Um, I'm hoping to get a whole slew of upgrades for it soon, but uh, I'm not going to speak out of turn there. You guys will hear more about that as things go. So that's gonna wrap it up for the base camp. 
Now next up is my uh, G-Speed V3 with a cliffhanger body. And unfortunately, we are not sitting in sunlight right now because if we were, you can see the real potential of this paint job. Um, it does not translate on camera. I'm looking at it right now and I can guarantee you that. But this is a fluorescent orange paint from Tamiya. And then I also did a clear pearl before I sprayed the orange. So it is a metallic fluorescent orange with silver stripes. So this thing is definitely hard to miss out there on the trails. Don't quite have it tucked all the way down. And then you can see I went with full clear windows and I put a gatekeeper interior inside. Uh, let's pop this body off. I actually want to show you guys on the inside. Uh, something new I did on a body here that I've never done before is I actually painted a window trim. So I cut out the uh, overspray film and then sprayed on the outside of the body with some black paint. Did a window trim with that. And then I also blacked out the rear windows. And let's see if I can get it to let go here. I also did the black drop bed there. So yeah, looking good in there. Um, probably not the cleanest paint job I've ever done. There's a few little mistakes here and there, but real happy with how it turned out. This thing looks awesome. It definitely gets attention. Left the headlight buckets clear, so in the future I may still be able to throw some headlights in there, potentially. We'll see what happens. But uh, on the interior, I cut out a scrap piece of Lexan and basically added an extension to the rear of the interior, which moved the drivers to a more appropriate position. And then with the back windows blacked out and then looking down inside the back window, you can't really tell. So it looks nice and clean. The drivers sit where they're supposed to be. And uh, I'm pretty happy with how that turned out. I also reinforced where the body posts come through on the body because on my last cliffhanger, they, the body posts were cracking through it and uh, didn't love that very much. So reinforced the fronts as well added some shoe goo to reinforce it with the extra Lexan that I trimmed out from the original body. So no cost at all, just a little bit of time and effort. And there you go, the G-Speed has a new paint job. Now, if you guys follow me on Instagram at West Desert Wheeler, you've already seen a teaser of this project. Last time you watched this show, if you caught episode number two, we talked about how I got a new Chupa Capra cage for my Axial Capra but I was gonna wait till after the finals to start work on that project. Well, it's after finals. Here we are with the original Axial Capra cage. And I'll tell you what, it is really surprising to me how easily that Trooper Capra cage just bolted right on. So here she is, unfortunately, still in the middle of the project, which is good for this series. So I can catch you up on the small details that we've worked on so far. But as far as install go, guy, goes, guys, uh, just four bolts on the front, I mean, four bolts for shocks, two bolts on each side of the skid. The original chassis pops off, this one drops right on and it bolts right back in. Like it's very easy to swap this over. The only consideration is just that you no longer have a battery tray, a receiver box, or uh, um, yeah, there's one other thing. I don't remember. But those are the two things I needed to figure out. I don't know for sure if I'm loving where I've got my battery tray set up right now. Uh, the battery will sit under the hood under the nose. It's just going to be hard to access. Going to have to figure out a quick and easy way to get in there. And then the receiver box, the fuel cell um, from the axial capper is where your receiver goes. But this car doesn't have that. And I'm trying to figure out where I want to make my receiver live. Uh, my dig unit wouldn't, would hit the receiver. I originally was going to just Velcro it right to the side of my transmission. But uh, the dig unit arm comes up and comes in contact with that, which has been causing me some issues. I had to tear apart the dig unit on this car because in four wheel drive, if I'm on a steep climb and I do a dig to reposition my fronts and try and grab four wheel drive again, it's not wanting to engage like it used to. So I don't know what, I still haven't quite solved that, what's going on, but uh, you know, we'll figure it out as we go. A uh, little detail that I've added last night, I've got these little Lexan panels up here in the nose triangle. Um, I've, I've got two sheets of Lexan coming. So I'm going to be making my own panels for the hood, roof, door panels. And then I just did these little guys up in here. I'm thinking I may end up copying that cliffhanger paint job, but uh, looking forward to that. And overall, man, I'm just really looking forward to having a Chuba Capra chassis car. Cause we got Vanquish axles, Vanquish transmission, uh, went through quite a bit of work to strip all the anodizing off of the Chupa Capra cage. Looks much better than the last time you guys saw it as it's all raw silver now. And uh, you really can't even tell it even ever had any scratches. So pretty dang happy with that. And that's pretty much got you caught up on the Chupa Capra for now. 
Here's one we don't see nearly enough on the channel. And uh, I've been out running this the past couple days and man, these are so fun to go out and drive. This is my RC four wheel drive Bully 2 car. Um, this one's got a few upgrades that I've picked up. Um, I bought this as is. I haven't changed like anything on it except for front axle drive shafts. Um, I've snapped three universal shafts in this car now and I'm actually going over to the, uh, I don't know what to call this, the CV joints, I guess. So it's more of like the round ball style instead of a universal joint going on in it. So right now, uh, got that, got it in one side of the car and then we got a universal on the other side of the car. Um, I keep breaking these and I'm not entirely sure why, but that's why it's in this series is because I swapped out an axle shaft but uh, expect to see more content on this guy soon. Super fun car, extremely capable. You can get this thing into some crazy places. And uh, maybe it's time to get this one a new Lexan body as well. Give it a little more wild paint job too. We can see what happens there. But that's it for the RC four wheel drive Bully 2. Something you may have seen sitting down here on the bench are these Spec RC Comp Cut wheels. You might recognize these because these were on my power wagon. Why would I take them off? Well, my new order of Spec RC wheels showed up and man, do these things look awesome. So these are the Spec RC 19-11 wheels. So 1911, um, great looking, very trail, trail ready beadlock style-esque. Uh, also got the new aluminum beadlock ring on there from Spec RC. They've got different styles of those rings, so be sure to check them out. And then last night I swapped over to the all scale hub hardware. Um, I'm not going to do the beadlock ring scale hardware because on this truck I run it extremely hard into nasty vertical walls and cracks and stuff. And when I do the scale hardware, that just bites into the sandstone and really kind of kills my performance. So I prefer to have the uh, cap head screws in there. But on the hub itself, absolutely, let's throw some style in there, make it look a little bit better. Really liking these. Uh, this is just a raw aluminum finish. They're not polished or anything. This is how they come out of the machine on Spec RC. Um, you can see right there. So super happy to have these on the truck. I've also got a set of SCX6 wheels that I need to get installed, but I have not completed those yet. Um, just haven't had time to tear everything down and then rebuild it all on the SCX6 as of yet. But real happy with the power wagon wheels. It was rolling around in our finals competition with these wheels. I put them on that weekend. Uh, they actually showed up in the mail on my way out of town. So I grabbed the box, threw it in the truck and ended up switching them out at night right before the comp and man, do these things look good. Also narrow track width. You can see these are on capper axles, but the comp cut swallows up the portal boxes, gives it a nice competitive overall width. Um, if you were to use something like a TGH uh, positive offset wheel, these are so close. These are like a 16th of an inch wider, but for as many style options as you get with the Spec RC, I would absolutely choose Spec RC, obviously. So be sure to check those guys out, making great stuff, really high end, very nice wheels. Well guys, I don't know if you have noticed or not, but I crossed over 10,000 subscribers. Uh, thank you all very much. Obviously that's on every single one of you as subscribers. There's nothing I can do personally to do that, but uh, thank you very much. It's a big milestone and I was very happy to cross over that mark. So I rewarded myself a little bit over the 10K mark and Sky RC helped me out with picking up a new car. So this is a Arma Creighton 6S. This is an eighth scale Truggy, I think. I don't know. I don't know. It's a big go fast basher, beat the crap out of it, do big jumps, backflips, and wheelies. Uh, super fun car. It's a departure of what I normally do, which is why I picked it up. Um, wanted to do something just a little bit different, and uh, the Creighton is certainly something different. So, this is a 6S truck. Um, the, the Creighton's completely stock. Uh, you guys can find out more about those uh, online, just like I did. But uh, I want to talk about my smart charger from uh, Spectrum. So I ended up getting a 6S power stage bundle for my SCX6. I've got two of these 5000 milliamp uh, smart G2 batteries. So there's no sensor wire on these things and it goes directly into their smart charger. So literally to charge this battery, I would power it on, plug it in, and that is it. This thing will charge itself. It knows what it's doing. It has two ports. I have two different battery packs. 
and uh, so I can run these with the EC5 battery connector. I can run those through my SDX6 where my controller will tell me how much battery life I have remaining and then I can also throw it in my Arma Creighton and uh, go drain these packs in about 30 to 45 minutes, which is an absolute blast. That car's super fun and uh, just an all out fun to have her, which I think is kind of funny. I put it up on my Instagram about me picking up a new car and uh, you crawler guys really don't like the bashers. Uh, there was a lot of very negative things said about that thing. Uh, I put up a pretty funny post that just said, teach me how to bash in three words and uh, had lots of great responses to that. So thanks to anyone who chimed in. Uh, last thing we need to cover is my SCX6. Uh, I guess I can grab it and drag it up on here on top of the countertop. Man, I had to reposition my camera just to see this damn thing. These, like, on camera, they don't come across as how big they are. This thing is a monster. It's as big as my damn countertop is. But at the finals event in Cedar City, there was a gentleman who came out to the event. He said he lived nearby and wanted to come out and say what's up, said he'd watched my channel and uh, I really appreciate him doing that at a minimum, but he walked up and handed me his RTR servo out of his SCX6 because he had heard me mention that mine was broken. So now my SCX6 is back up and running. Uh, my SCX6 front differential has a tiny little chip in it, but I'm just gonna keep running it now that I have my servo back in it. Really excited to get this one back out on the trails. Um, from the time of me posting uh, about these tires, which were like, pre-release on the Proline tires. Now everybody's got them and they're performing excellent for everybody. Really stoked on that. But uh, to the gentleman who gave me his stock steering servo, I seriously mean this. Thank you very much. I'm really excited to have this truck back and uh, you guys will be seeing more content on it very soon. So, holy cow, man, that was a lot of talking. I really appreciate you guys watching. I hope you enjoy the content. I hope you have a great weekend or weekday or whenever you catch this, hope you enjoyed a uh, whatever your preferred drink is while watching one of these videos. So hope you guys had a good one. We'll see you in the next one. Keep the rubber side down.